I am here in the center of town in Jerusalem, and as you can see, it is a rainy day in March. It's been raining a lot for the past couple of days, and we are going to take a walk. I'm not sure if I can tell you ahead of time where we're going, because I am waiting for Mali, and I'm just going to follow her wherever she wants to take me and take us, and uh, I hope that you enjoy this tour. In the meantime, I'll flip around the camera, and you can uh, watch and see the center of town in Jerusalem. We are on Jaffa Street. There we go. And I must tell you that we are in the month of Adar, the second month of Adar, <coughs> in the in the Jewish tradition, we have a Hebrew calendar, and the Hebrew calendar is a lunar calendar according to the moon. In the Hebrew calendar, we have a leap month. We a leap month, not a leap a, a, a leap year that has a leap month, has an extra month, not an extra day, in order to correlate co with the um, with the sun calendar. And this year we have the leap month. This is the second month of Adar. In this, the month of Adar, every year we have the holiday of Purim, that we read the book of Esther, remembering the miracles that occurred in Persia, when the evil, the evil advisor to the king of Persia, to the Hashverosh, his evil advisor's name was Haman. On Purim, we read the book of Esther to remember that Haman wanted to annihilate the Jewish people, and we had a great miracle. God had mercy on the Jewish people and delivered us, saved the Jewish people from the decree of Haman. So we celebrate the holiday of Purim. On the holiday of Purim, we read the book of Esther, we have a festive meal, we give gifts to the needy, and we give Mishloach Manot. Mishloach Manot is a, a, a type of a, a, a gift of a meal to friends. So according to the Halakha, we need to give two Mishloach Manot to two different people. I just want to let you know that I'm waiting for Molly and now I don't see her. She might have left. What will I do? While we walk around in the streets of Jerusalem, you can enjoy and notice people around us if you identify the dress code some of the people, most of the people here are Jewish, some of them are Orthodox, Harry D, the ultra-religious, uh, some of the people around us are Muslims, and we might see women in Muslim headdress, in the hijab, um, and some might be Christians, we might see priests and nuns of different orders. If you see people in dress code, that is interesting to you, that you do not recognize, write it in the comments. Let me know what you're seeing and what is of interest to you. But getting back to Purim, Purim is a big party. And what I did not mention is that in Purim we have the fancy dress celebration. You could say that it, uh, on the... the uh, Outwardly, it might remind you of Halloween, uh, where people dress, wear costumes, but the, the meaning of the holiday has no relation to Halloween, but the idea, the concept, that people are, are dressing in costumes, and children, and maybe even adults. So the holiday is this week, Purim is this week, and we might see people on the street in uh, costumes as part of the Purim celebration. Notice the flags here. We see the Israeli flag and the Ukrainian flag. This is at Kekar Sion, a central square in Jerusalem, the capital of Jerusalem. Here we can see 
the Jerusalem light rail train that cuts from the north to the south, from Neve Yaakov neighborhood in the north, through the center of Jerusalem, on this leg of the on this leg of the light rail, he goes from the old city, which is in the east, to the central bus station in the west, and then it turns again to the south. Here, again, in Kekar Tzion, we can see the Ukrainian flag, Israelis expressing their solidarity with the people of the Ukraine, uh, while the Ukraine is being bombarded and invaded by the Russians, by Putin. Uh, we might see, we will see in many locations in Israel, the Ukrainian flag and Israelis expressing solidarity with the Ukrainian people. Here you can see that there are costumes for sale. Now we see the light train coming from the west towards Neve Yaakov, going from west to east and at the At the corner of the old city, at, after City Hall, it, the train will turn to the north. Here we can see more masks, costumes for Purim. We have some very harsh weather, which uh, I would say was unexpected. and. Uh, I'm seeing notices from many municipalities, many places are shifting up the Purim celebration a couple of days. Part of the Purim celebration, the Purim parades uh, for the children because I guess the day of Purim is expected to be even rainier. you know what this uh, fellow's outfit represents, you can let me know right in the comments. I think that he's some kind of Eastern clergy with a purple gown and a black hat. This is Rav Cook Street, Rabbi Cook Street. Rabbi Cook was the first Ashkenazi chief rabbi in the land of Israel during the British Mandate. And uh, he lived here when he became the chief rabbi. He lived here on this street. There's a, an old uh, neighborhood called Beit David behind this, this new housing complex. There's an old neighborhood from the 19th century that's called Beit David. Uh, and Rabbi Avraham Yitzchak Kohen Cook lived in that uh, neighborhood. I need to find a place where I can 
get some cover from the rain. Try to stand in the entrance of the Jerusalem Hostel. So this is Kekarzion, the Zion Square, in the rain. And I am standing under a type of balcony entrance cover at the Jerusalem Hostel. The street has been cut off to regular traffic. Only emergency vehicles are allowed to drive here, like the police car in front of us the Israeli police. In Hebrew it says Mishteret Israel. In English it says police. And in Arabic it says Shorta. Shorta, the police. There's another police car further up. Just being here. Keep the peace. In case anyone has any problems, they can approach the police officers who are here. This is a municipal service vehicle. It says Nayedet Nikayon. Nikayon is for sanitation. So the city municipal workers are allowed in the service to use this road. Um, but aside for that, aside for emergency vehicles, police, and ambulances, and uh, municipal services in the service, no other vehicles are seen on this road, only the Jerusalem light rail. You see the municipal service car going up Hillel Street, which is also closed to any traffic. It's only for pedestrians. It's a pedestrian mall. It's a Jerusalem pedestrian mall. The Ben Yehuda Street is very known and famous. It's a, an attraction. The light train, Jerusalem light rail, we can see it pulling into the station. This is also a police vehicle, unmarked. We see the Jerusalem light rail coming from Mount Herzl in Jerusalem, stopping at the Jaffa Street train station, or light train station, which is just near the crossroads of Jaffa Street and King George. The cars you see passing behind the light train are on King George Street. See the light train? It says L1, Chel Ha'avir. This is the, there's only one. There's only one light train rail in Jerusalem today. There's another that is under construction that will cross over to other parts of the city. But currently there's only one line. Of course, in both directions. We can see that the Jerusalem streets seem pretty busy, even though it's raining in Jerusalem today. There are a lot of people out. It's not too late in the afternoon, although it seems to be a little dark. It's because of the weather. It is uh... Oh, it's it's later than I thought. It's about 5:30 now. 5:30 in the afternoon. So it's a little later than I thought.
We're walking along Jaffa Street, which is a central Jerusalem commercial area. As you can see, it's a rainy day in Jerusalem. It's been a couple of days of rain, but that, that's not keeping people at home. People are out and about. Yesterday was actually very cold. It's not as cold as it was yesterday, but it, it is wet. We, we stood earlier yeah, under this uh, roof of the hostel. See, it says hostel, and it says Jerusalem hostel, but there's also a blue sign. Let's take a look. It's Yafo, Jaffa Street, number 44, and there's an historical sign that is already, yeah. is already erased from the elements, but there's a newer blue sign that tells us about the history of this hotel. So it was originally Tel Aviv Ron Hotel. Today it's called the Jerusalem Hostel. Two-story, eclectic style residence house. An eclectic is a, a mix of different styles. Resident house designed by architects Fatist and Spiro Khori and built in 1927 to 1928 by the brothers Ezra and Pinchas Kukia. Shortly after its completion, it was converted into Tel Aviv Hostel, which became Ran Hotel. No, Tel Aviv Hotel, which became Ran Hotel, later Menorah Hotel, and later Jerusalem Hostel, which it is today, Jerusalem Hostel, which is right here in Keikar Tzion. See, we're, we're literally in Keikar Tzion. If we cross the street into Design Square, we'll be able to spin around to get some perspective to see what the building looks like from across the street. So we're walking into Zion Square. You see that the municipality has built these nice decorative wooden benches that in uh, normal dry times are full of people. You can buy your falafel or your shawarma or a drink or whatever it is and just sit here and hang out and talk with your friends and often there are street performers. This is the building that we were looking at, the Tel Aviv Hotel or the Ran Hotel or the Menorah Hotel or the Jerusalem Hostel at Zion Square. Zion Square, which is the end, it's the, the crossroads of Jaffa Street or Yafo Street and uh, Ben Yehuda Open Mall. This building, as we read on the sign, was built in 1927 on the very central Jaffa Street in Jerusalem. You can see these buildings that were built in the 1920s. This whole row of buildings, I'm sure that I know that each one of them has a story. All of these very beautiful two and three story buildings on Jaffa Street from the 1920s. Uh, and buildings are being restored, preserved, expanded. Here we can see work going on. You can see that the, the building 
um, construction or, to protect the building that's going on. Hmm. Here you can see the Ben Yehuda Street going up towards King George. And here passing by the Herbert Samuel Hotel on the right side and the Majbir Letzal Khan shopping store on the left side. We're going to walk down the Yoel Moshe Salomon Street. Through Nachalat Shiva. On a previous video, we walked on Yoel Moshe Salomon Street, coming from the Museum of Tolerance at the Mamila Park or the Mamila Cemetery, which is right in front of us now. We're walking towards the Museum of Tolerance, is the building just across of us, in between the two rows of houses. This is Shamai Street. Yoel Moshe Salomon, which is part of the Nachalat Shiva'a, which is the third neighborhood that was built outside of the walls of the old city of Jerusalem at the end of the 19th century by Yoel Moshe Salomon and six of his associates. Together they were seven partners, and the Shiva'a means seven. The neighborhood is named for seven partners who purchased the land to build this neighborhood. And this is the, the homes, the historical homes of Nachalat Shiva. So all of these houses were built towards the end of the 19th century, 140 years ago, about. Look at this painting on the doorway depicting Jerusalem. You can see the Ottoman walls of the old city of Jerusalem, or maybe other walls, but behind it you can see the temple standing in blue in the middle, and homes outside of the old city of Jerusalem. And here is another interesting painting. What does this represent? which means the passage to the synagogue and it's a passage to the Italian synagogue and here you can see a sign Museum of Italian Jewish Art and the Italian Synagogue which is on uh, Hillel Street which is up the next street here's a wooden carving gallery And here's another historical blue sign. Nachalat Shiva, the estate of seven, the third Jewish neighborhood outside the old city, an initiative of seven of the prominent veteran Jewish community in Jerusalem, built in 1869. As a courtyard neighborhood divided to seven lots, in 1988, the municipality started the rehabilitation project in cooperation with the Ministry of Tourism. The property owners and the Jerusalem Fund under the supervision of architect Nahum Meltzer. This uh, square here 
is called is known as Kekar Hachatulot, the Alley Cats Square, or the Cats Square, but officially it's known as the Maccabi Square, named for Maccabi Mutzeri Many. So we see the street signs, Yoel Moshe Salomon and Hillel Street. That's Hillel, Hillel Street. Lower down it becomes Ben Sira. In the Maccabi Square or the Cat Square, there's this sculpture, this colorful wall that we should take a better look at on a dedicated visit. This is the Museum of Tolerance built on the Islamic Cemetery at Mamila. This is Jerusalem public parking in the city. You always, if you're parking a car, notice the blue sign on the top with the chet and p in the middle, and then it says patashlum, payment, and then it has the rules. You always need to read the rules when you park to see that you're parking in a place that is permitted, on hours that is permitted, and then you can pay with one of the two apps that are indicated below. See the names of the apps. One is called Pango and the other is Selo Park. And you need to install one of those apps on your phone and log in your credit card information. And then you can, and you, of course your car information, and then you can use the app to pay for your public parking on blue and white. Uh, but not only blue and white. Here it's also public parking without being painted blue and white on the curb. So you need to always read the sign. Otherwise you might get a ticket. And here is the Maccabi Mutzeri Meni Square. Named for Maccabi Mutzeri Meni, who was a hero of Israel who fought for the liberation of Israel and Israel's War of Independence and fell, was killed in the war protecting the open road to Jerusalem when Jerusalem was under siege by the Arab forces in 1948. These uh, lockers, you see the lockers with the yellow roofs? This is a service by the municipality for homeless people who live in the streets. The municipality has placed these lockers and they have some kind of social workers system who identify the people in need and a people like that might be eligible to get a key for their belongings, to lock their belongings and to have some privacy. And this sculpture is a carpet. It's actually a carpet on either side of the street. We'll come back another time and do more investigation about the carpet. We're on Ben Sira Street. Up above was Hillel, but it's become Ben Sira. It's a neat place. There are some nice, uh, nice restaurants here. There's a good place here for hummus. And in front of us, the Torah building with the lights is the Mamila Hotel, which is at the, right next to the Mamila Mall. Here we see the Anna Frank Center of the Hineni Social Welfare Community Programs Humanitarian, Humanitarian Restaurant for Jerusalem. It's a charity in Amuta. Friends, as always, I hope that you enjoyed this tour. I look forward to hearing your input. So please write it in the comment section. Check out other videos on my channel. Subscribe and check the, check the notification button. Be well. See you here in the land of Israel. Shalom.